Oh, thank you, Senator. And, and likewise, I want to say to all my colleagues, we, we represent very different areas, but it's wonderful to see us, us here together. Um, I had an independent redistricting commission bill back in 26 years ago. And it was something that we were, of course, at the time, uh, I had been president of the League of Women Voters, and it was something that we were really espousing. And I appreciate what you're doing. Um, but then we do have complexities that fall in, certainly I know in my county, I know in Nassau too, where we have such diverse communities that one next to another, I mean, it, you know, I'll have a poor Chester with, you know, well over 50% of the community is Spanish speaking, and then right next to that is Rye City, <laughs> which couldn't be more blue blood. So um, it, it, it's sometimes hard to, to work out communities of common interest, but we're all interested in having a, an honest voice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that we have to keep pointing to. Well, I think there the point is that sometimes because of the way in which people live in the, in the patterns that they live in, uh, that you know, districts are not going to be homogeneous in terms of socioeconomic, cultural, ethnic background. They are going to be diverse, and that's good. But the question is, if you've got a community that does have a particular character, to the extent that it's possible not to split it up, but to allow those people to have a unified voice, to feel that they have some a political say uh, in their governance, uh, and that they have a reasonable chance to be heard uh, in the diversity that is uh, many of the New York suburban and urban districts. Well, then I have another question. Um, I think several years back, well, the other was a statement. Now it's a question. Um, and didn't our highest court say that it was uh, important to group people of color together, or uh, just based on the color, not on ethnicity or any of that. And that's how we ended up having a district that's largely Bronx, but a little bit of Westchester. What well, wasn't that? It, you know, the Voting Rights Act protects minority voters who are often defined um, racially, but they can also be defined according to language. Um, and so it, that's one of the reasons why uh, we say it's not possible to just take straight lines. And some, you know, I'll go out speaking to the public, and invariably there's somebody who will stand up and say, why can't we just program a computer to draw straight lines, an algorithm, and just divide every, uh, the entire state up into even lines, uh, even population, straight line districts. And the truth of the matter is that the voting rights uh, requirements to be fair to people who have traditionally been underrepresented, to be sure that we try to be sensitive to communities of interest, whether they're protected by the Voting Rights Act or not, um, but that we draw maps that reflect the reality of the people who live in the state means that sometimes it's easy to point in isolation to the map that ends up being drawn and say, oh my God, how did they come up with this crazy shape? But if you actually peel back and look at the demographics, then if it's well drawn, the logic for why it's maybe not as pretty if, as if you drew a straight line uh, is compelling. Then I have one more question. Um, I thought that our highest court had also said that you can't uh, discriminate in your lines on race or ethnicity, but that you can discriminate on political re for political reasons. Well, um, you, the courts have said that it is not unconstitutional to look right. at the political cast of a particular district um, where you would have constitutional problems of using uh, race uh, as the sole factor. Um, you can, whether it's desirable or not, the courts uh, have often said doing something that may be um, uh, not uh, the most uh, smart way to do it, doesn't make it unconstitutional. The courts look at a very narrow test. They're looking only at constitutionality, uh, and that is equal protection under the law. So there are a lot of other factors that can go in, and unfortunately, the courts have said that uh, incumbency uh, and um, 
uh, the politics of the residents of the district, uh, it's not unconstitutional. For us, the question is, is it good practice? Is it desirable? And does it get us the representative government uh, that our founding fathers saw as an ideal? And we believe that using politics as the driving factor uh, undercuts the representative nature uh, of our uh, system uh, and makes too many people feel disenfranchised. It is the fact that there are an increasing number of people in this state, as there are across the country, who decline to name a political party, who think of their political allegiances differently. Now, that's a challenge for the political parties. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but it is a reality. So if you are looking only at our voters who are registered to particular parties, you're cutting out a large part. Uh, of the population who are voters to say nothing of the residents that you have to uh, include uh, because they are counted in the census as they properly are and they are represented by our government even though they may not be able to vote. <laughs>